The secretary will now read the order paper. Uh, the uh, motions, um, and, and that being the case, uh, can I find out if there are any notices of motions from the House? Dango. Yeah. Speak to the mic, yes. Madam Fusamo Fusamo Gau Presa. Yeah, okay. Thank you. It's now working. <laughs> it's technology, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I wish to move a notice without motion. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move the House notes with deep concern that the organization undoing tax abuse commission, out, uh, called OUTA commissioned analysis that found traces of E. coli in Amundsen's water supply in the presently led by the DA in the Tswani Metro Council. Two notes that Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, just on a point of order, uh, is it notice, uh, motions without notice of notices or motion? Which are we busy with at the moment? Notices of, of motion. Yes, please proceed. It's not the first thing. It's not. It's not. Sit down. This one is motion. Yeah, let's. Honorable Member Dango uh, is seeking to convey to the House, and if there's anything untoward, we'll, we'll indicate. Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, two notes that the residents recently embarked on a violent process over allegations that the water supplied by the city was of a strange color, smelled badly, and was contaminated with cholera. That problems with the water were seemingly as a result of the way of our wastewater treatment plant, which is poorly maintained. Three further notes that the city of Tswani is unashamedly trampling on the human rights of residents in the area in the provision of dirty and toxic water resulting in some people being admitted to hospital for illnesses allegedly contracted as a result of the water situation. Four, access to clean uh, water is a universal human right. Maybe what you should say, uh, Honorable Dango, is, is that uh, the longer the, the motion uh, and the way it's articulated suggests that it, it, it may be a motion uh, without, without notice. It is and can I urge honorable members to please pay attention to this matter so that it doesn't recur. Uh, 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 yeah, for, for, for now, why don't we, we say we'll give you an opportunity perhaps to raise the issue later. Any other motion? Uh, thank you, honorable Chaperson. Uh, on behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby give notice that in the next sitting of the Council, I shall move that the Council, one, debate strategies to revitalize and bolster the provincial economies to create jobs and economic opportunities for our people. Two, note that the recent data shows that an estimated 27.1% of all South Africans are unemployed, which is an increase of 2.8% from 2009. 
three, further notes that despite fluctuating and steady economic growth by provinces in the last 10 years, the average economic growth coupled with the rising unemployment continues to create unbearable condition for socioeconomic advancement for our people. I so move. Thank you. Honorable member, can I find out what your, your issue is? The point of order? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I have my hand up for a motion. May I proceed? Sorry? I have my hand up for a motion. You asked who wants okay. to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, geachte voorzitter, die Democratische Alliantie stel voor dat bij die volgende sitting hierdie huis die belangrijkheid van taalrechten en meertaligheid in Zuid-Afrika debatteer. Ek dankie. Thank you very much. Any, any other motion? Yes. Motion. Yes. Morenji. Honorable Chairperson, motion without notice. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move that the House notes with profound appreciation that on the 20th of August marks 36th anniversary of the birth of the giant United Democratic Front of our revolution. Also notes that the launch of the United Democratic Front in 1983 in Rockland's Western Cape brought about a new chapter in the history of the national democratic struggle opposing the racist tricameral parliamentary system which was introduced by the apartheid regime in 1983. Further notes that under the leadership of Mama Albertina Sisulu, Archie Gumede, and Oscar Mapeta as the first UDF honorary presidents and Dr. Alan Busak, its patron, the UDF mobilized communities and sectors across the length and breadth of our country to wage hero heroic battles against the evils of apartheid and ensure that the genomy and popularity of the ANC remained entrenched in communities. Therefore, salute the UDF for the struggles it waged and coordinated for us to be a free country and call upon the people who love our nation, especially young people, to keep the legacy of the UDF alive by collectively fighting the ills that engulfed our society, I so move. Lansman. Thank, thank you, Chair. On behalf of the ANC, I hereby give a notice that in the next setting of the Council, I shall move that the Council debates the basic service to communities, number one, number two, notes that since the dawn of democracy in 1994, South Africa has made numerous strides in delivery of basic services to communities that face exclusion and neglect by the apartheid system. Future note that the community survey which was conducted by STATS SA has shown that 89.8% of households in South Africa use pipe water, 63.4% use flush toilets connected to either public sewage or local septic system. 63 of the old, so old services received refuge removal services and 87% of the households had access to electricity. I so move, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, yes, honorable member. Yeah. Honorable uh, Chair, I, I don't know, I, we're confused now because now we're having motions without notice and notices of motions all mixed up. So I want to suggest that uh, this, uh, there's another training session organized specifically for the ANC members, because it's clear that they don't understand the difference. Yeah. No, honorable, honorable member, 
I, I, I guess what, what, what should, be, should, should be happening now is that the uh, uh, responsible persons and the whips of, of political parties, and of course, I'm sure the, 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 the chief whip is noting the, the problem. That indeed what we should do is to, is to ensure that it is, there's, there's further training and just to ensure clarity uh, on, on, on the matter going forward. Uh, honorable member, we should be the last one now. Please proceed. Ekuimela bandara IFF ekanza mlo tav. Meranza ku ba ibula bula ibu chaise ki eka ba donzi na ba dundi si ashkolu nakes. Thank you very much. Um, can you, can you then move on to the the second part of the the motions, which is a motion without 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 notice. Yes, let's start with you. Thank you, Chairperson. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move that the House notes and welcomes with profound appreciation that the 19th of August 2019 marks the 80th birthday of our iconic music legend, Kefa Simenya. Also notes that he started his journey on music at the age of 15 and has been happily married with his loving sis Letambuli who is also our music giant for more than 50 years. His music has been one of the cornerstones for our liberation struggle in promoting arts and culture, even while in exile. Therefore, we wish him all the best in his life and pursuit for music development efforts. Happy belated birthday, Brakefas Kula, Brakefas Kula, I so move. Thank you very much. Is, is there any objection to, to the motion? Motion agreed to. Um, the next person this side. Another motion, yes. Thank you, Chairperson. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby move without notice that this council notes the state of local government finances and financial management report released by National Treasury last week. The report, which analyzed the fourth quarter of the 2017-2018 financial year, found the DA-led Drakenstein municipality to be the most financially healthy municipality in the country. The DA-led municipality of George tied in third, while the then DA-led Nelson Mandela Bay municipality tied in fifth place. Further note, that it is only where the DA governs that municipalities function and effectively provide service delivery to the residents. And that this report is an indictment on the DA's successful ability to lead with transparency and accountability. I so move. Yes. Chairperson, on behalf of the African National Congress Chair, I hereby move that this House notes the welcome with, welcomes with appreciation the rules by the Judge Mo Japero in the Equity Court that the graciousness display of the apartheid flag de demonstrated. It's a clear um, it's a clear intention to be harmful, Chair, and uh, also incite harmful, harmfulness and promotes and incite hatred against black people in terms of the Equity Act. Also note, Chair, that the ruling comes as a result of the Nelson Mandela Foundation uh, disputing the um, disputing the display of the apartheid flag during the Black Monday protest with the Equity Court and supported by 
the SAHRC and the other groupings. Further note, Chair, that we further note that this display of old apartheid flag is an induction of a total rejection of hard earning reconciliation embracement. It embraces hatred and undermining our constitutional democracy that exposes human rights and national building. The old flag chair is a representative of the apartheid which was declared a crime against humanity. And therefore, Chair, it call on, we call on all South Africans to respect the law and exercise the optimum level of tolerance to one another. I so move, Chair. Thank you very much. Is there an objection to the motion? Yes, there's an objection to the motion. The, the motion will therefore uh, not be proceeded with uh, and will become a, a, a notice of a motion. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move without notice that this council notes that the Masinonyana municipality in the Free State is still under administration 29 months after the Section 139 1B intervention began. The municipal ESCOM debt has in the period increased and the municipality's financial position is now worse than before. The municipality is also still unable to provide water on a regular basis to many residents, an issue over which they have been reported by the DA, amongst others, to the Human Rights Commission on various occasions. Further note that such interventions happen at a huge cost to the taxpayer without a clear recovery plan in place, nor an exit strategy or regular or financial reports to the NCOP, despite this issue being related to the delivery of most ser basic services to the people. And finally, that this council resolves that in all interventions, including this one, a three-month progress report be required from the administrator to be submitted to the select committee on a regular basis with reasons for the progress or decline in the state of the municipality under intervention. I so move. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any objection to the motion? There being an objection, the, mo the motion is therefore not uh, uh, agreed to, will not be proceeded with, and will become a, a notice of, of, a, of, of a motion. Any other motion? Yes. Uh, thanks very much, Honorable Chairperson. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move that the House note with the concern that there is a scammer in the Free State who is allegedly claiming his work in the office of the Premier and is promising job to the people of the so in, in, on social media. Also note that he is apparently using the name Mpo Gift and he is requesting as much as 8,000 from the victim and exchanging for job placement. Further notes that the Free State Government has placed it on record that government posts are advertised in the local and national newspapers, other media platforms, as well as the Free State Provincial Government website. The government has formal produce requirement and proper channels when recruiting. Therefore, urge people to be vigilant of scam should our people come across such individual. They are advised to report them immediately to the law enforcement authorities. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Is there any objection to this motion? None. The motion is therefore agreed to. Any other motion, Dango? They come back, Honorable Chair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move that the House notes with deep concern that the Organization for Undoing Tax Abuse commissioned analysis that found traces of E. coli in the Amundsen water supply, which is presently led by the DA coalition. Also notes that residents recently embar embarked upon a violent process over allegations that the water supplied by the city was of a strange color and smelled badly. 
and was contaminated with cholera, and that problems with the same water were seemingly as a result of the Ruivater wastewater treatment plant, which is poorly maintained. Further notes that the city of Chani is unashamedly trampling on the human rights of the residents in the area in the provision of dirty and toxic water, resulting in some people being admitted to hospital for illnesses allegedly contracted as a result of the water situation. Ac access to clean water is a universal human right and therefore call upon the relevant stakeholders to work tirelessly for solutions to the crises and to take action to hold all responsible and accountable. I so move. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Is there an objection to the motion? Yeah, it's an objection. The motion will therefore not be proceeded with and will now become a, a notice of a motion. At the back, honorable member. Thank you, Chairperson. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby move without notice that this council notes the ruling by the North Gauteng High Court yesterday that set aside the findings of the Sariti Commission of Inquiry into the 1999 arms deal. It agrees that this is a clear indication that the original findings of the commission were illegitimate and inconsistent and prevented the accountability of those implicated, including Shabir Sheikh and former President Jacob Zuma. Further note that the High Court found that the Commission failed to investigate critical reports, refused to examine proceedings of the Shabir Sheikh trial, and failed to value the rules of evidence which concern a Commission of Inquiry. And lastly note that the people of South Africa must once again pay the price for ANC corruption with an entire Commission of Inquiry now being ruled as null and void. I so move. Thank you very much. Any is there any objection to the, this motion? Uh, the motion will therefore not be proceeded with and will now become notice of a, of a motion. Let's now concentrate this side. Yeah, Honorable Khai. Uh, th thank you again, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I'm now dealing with motion uh, without notice. On behalf of uh, the African National Congress, I hereby move that to the House notes and welcome the appreciation that despite the deteriorating local and global economic investment environment, which has resulted in most of South Africa's special economic zones struggling to attract investment. Ngoha SEZ, which is operated by Ngoha Development Corporation in Port Elizabeth, is riding the investment wave. Two, also note that the Ngoha SEZ celebrate its 40th anniversary this year and currently has 45 operating investor tenants. Three, further notes that the inflow of new investment will drive job creation in the Eastern Cape, a region with an un unemployment rate of 32% and help diversify the region's economy, which is heavily reliant on the automotive industry. Four, therefore commence the SEZ in their mission to be competitive investment location supported by value-added business services, which effectively enables socio-economic development in the Eastern Cape and the rest of South Africa. I so move, Chair. Thank, Thank you very much. Is there any objection to this motion? None, so the motion is, is agreed to. Um, let's start with you. Come to. Oh, thank you, Chair. On behalf of the African National Congress, as I hereby move that the House notes with encouragement and appreciation that this month, as the Women's Month, we celebrate and pay tribute to the millions of South Africa women for their selfless contribution to the liberation struggle and for their continuous efforts in rebuilding our nation. Two, also notes that this month is embedded from the 9th August 1956 milestone and historic match by more than 2,000 women from all walks of the country to the union buildings, Pretoria Press, protesting the unjust past laws enforced on women by apartheid regime. 
further notes that on this month, it is befitting that we take stock on the progress that we made on the creation of non-sexist society and promotion of women emancipation since 1994. Therefore, commence the ANC-led government on its consistent long-standing commitment in affirming women, women's representation in all levels of public services, political decision-making, and their rights in totality. I so moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there any objection to the, to the motion? No. None. Motion, therefore, agreed to. Honorable member. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move that the House notes and welcome with deep sense of appreciation uh, of, of appreciation to Justice Edwin Cameroon's retirement as a judge from Constitutional Court. After 25 years and, is, uh, and a respected legal career on Tuesday. Also note that Justice Edwin Cameroon is one of the greatest legal minds of his time and known for his long life advocacy for human rights as well as his, his fight for universal access to antiretrovirals for HIV positive citizens. Further notes that Justice Cameroon, who is openly gay and was one of the first a public figure to discuss his HIV status. First graced the bench as acting judge on the 20th of August 1994 until December of the same year. I therefore wish the selfless and humble people's judge well in his retirement and also on his future endeavors with hope that the nation will benefit from his legal expertise even after his retirement. I so move, Chair. Thank you very much. Any objection? None. Motion agreed to. At the back. Uh, on behalf of the economic freedom fighters, uh, I hereby move that the House notes that uh, even though they have been uh, very uh, violent demonstrations in the region of Amatole about water crisis. Uh, until to date, the people of Amatole have no water and there is no proper plan for providing them with water. Uh, I wish that the House could know that water is a basic right. Our people deserve water. I so move, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any objection to the motion? None. Motion, therefore, agreed to. Any other motion? None. Sorry? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, on behalf of EFF, we'd like to, uh, the House to note and appreciate UNISA for naming one of its buildings after Mama Nomzamo. Matigizela Mandela, especially on a woman's month. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. There's the motion. Any objection to the motion? None. Motion, therefore, agreed to. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will then move on to the, the orders. Can the secretary read the orders of the, of the, of the day? Order number one, consideration of report of Select Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Water and Sanitation and Human Settlements, Inspection and Local or Notice of Intervention issued in terms of Section 139.1b and Subsection 5 of the Constitution in Amatlati Local Municipality. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now look at the, the first order and we'll ask Honorable um, Dodobu to come forward.
Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson of the Council, Honorable Members, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure that this afternoon I present a statement of the intervention on Amasati Local Municipality issued in terms of Section 1391B of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. The Select Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, having regard to the notice of intervention involved in Richmond, in Amasat Local Municipality, in terms of Section 139, 1 and 5 of the Constitution, embarked on an in local inspection visit of the municipality on the 15th of August 2019. The multi-party delegation of the select committee interacted with the MEC responsible for COCTA in the province, the different stakeholders as well as the administrator appointed by the department to speed up implementation of the approved turnaround plan for the overall improvement of its state of performance and compliance. The department as well as the representatives of the internal and external stakeholders within the municipality tabled and presented their opinions and views on the invocation of the intervention. The MEC reflected on the current state of the intervention in the municipality, briefly focusing on the challenges and the dysfunctionality of the municipality, the investigative work conducted by the department to discover more about the extent of this dysfunctionality. He also presented the protests and violence in the municipality the developments and changes in the political leadership, the executive failures of the council, as well as all the matters that had led to the invocation of the section 1391B. In summary, Amasati local municipality started experiencing upheavals and disruption in service delivery as from March 2017 due to a standoff between the workers and the leadership of the municipality. The key issues that led to the standoff between the employer and the employees was due to a series of disagreements resulted from the unfulfilled obligation in the implementation of the standardization process involving correcting disparities that existed in the, in the task grade of the workers. This tension resulted in an unstable municipal environment and affected delivery of services to the local community, which is the mandate and the role of every municipality in South Africa. It further led to the closure of the national road that is N6 passing through the town, through barricades and the burning of tires. Subsequent to a petition submitted to the MEC, demanding answers to, on the progress made on a series of demands. The Department of COCTA assembled a task team of officials to scope the allegation and concerns. Emanating from the scoping exercise, the MEC liaised with the local political leadership, management and organized labor in the municipality with a view to assist the municipality in developing a work process plan for approval by the council, a necessary step towards addressing issues in the, in the petition as raised by the community. Investigations conducted by the department itself. The processes of interrogating the complaints in the department discovered that yes, indeed, the municipality was unable to fulfill its statutory obligations. Additionally, there were evident signs of maladministration, fraud, corruption, and other serious malpractices occurring. 
This culminated in the Department of Cocta in the Eastern Cape, initiating the forensic, the forensic investigation into the affairs of the municipality, and the National Treasury assisted it. On the 22nd of June 2018, the MEC tabled the investigating report to the Municipal Council outlining its findings and recommendations. For reasons still unknown, the Municipal Council ignored the report in its entirety and its recommendations were never implemented. The blatant disregard of the report and the continued flouting of various legal processes in performing municipal work resulted in protests and demonstrations by the entire community, which led into service delivery disruptions and the banning of municipal offices, the community services, as well as the clinic. The problems of Amatlati local municipality are best summed up by its mayor when she said, and I quote, we move from VUNA awards to VUTA awards, from clean audits to clean banking accounts because we are now bankrupt. The select committee have, having regard to, the com, to, to compliance with the procedural and constitutional matters relating to the intervention at Amatlati local municipality recommend as follows to the house that the NCOP approves the intervention in Amatlati local municipality in terms of section 1391B and five of the constitution. That the Eastern Cape MEC for COCTA should table the department investigation report, the implementation plan and the forensic investigation report in terms of section 106 of the municipal system act and after tabling it, he must present it to this council. That in respect of those councillors who are not attending council meetings, the speaker of the municipality should enforce the code of conduct for councillors contained in the Municipal Systems Act to ensure accountability. That the administrator should fast track the process of reviewing the reversal of standardization process as stipulated in his terms of references and also review the organizational structure and future packages of middle management and supervisors. That the MEC of COCTA in the Eastern Cape should facilitate the process of sharing with all internal and external stakeholders of the municipality this report of the select committee immediately after, after so, so, sorry, he must share with all the stakeholders stakeholders both internally and externally in the municipality and thereafter submit that report to this to this council. That the select committee on cooperative governance and traditional affairs in cooperation with the relevant portfolio committee in the Eastern Cape legislature should after termination of the intervention conduct a follow-up oversight to the municipality in order to evaluate the impact of the intervention in accordance with the terms of reference of the administrator. And lastly, Honorable Chair, that the political issues, especially divisions and factions among councillors, are the major cause of the problems of Amatlati local municipality, and as such, they must be attended to, especially by the ruling party. Thank you very much. Now, thank you very much. Uh, honorable member, uh, before I put the question, are there other provincial declarations? None. Uh, we'll therefore uh, uh, proceed. Um, to find out if, 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 if members wish to uh, in, indicate how they, they would like to, 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 to exercise their, their, their vote. Uh, and in doing so, we'll follow the following procedure. Firstly, we'll find out uh, those, about those who are in favor and, and they should uh, say yes. Uh, those against say no, those who abstain, abstain. Uh, 
Can we find out those in favor? Oh, because it's probably a delegation. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Thanks for that. I put the, the I therefore put the question. Um, and the question is that the report be, be adopted. Yes, agreed, agreed. Uh, we'll therefore proceed and start with the Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape, indication of your vote. Eastern Cape, here yeah, has a report. Eastern Cape support the report. Free State. Uh, free State, you have to go. 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 supports the report. KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal supports the report. Mpopo. Mpopo supports the report. Mpumalanga. Mpumalanga supports the report. Northern Cape. Thank you very much. The last province is the Western Cape. Northwest. Uh, no, sorry, Northwest. Give sabotage. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Northwest supports the report. China is also from Northwest. <laughs> uh, noted, yeah. Western Cape. Voorzitter, die Westkap ondersteun. Ondersteun, thank you very much. Ondersteun. Support, support. I didn't want to get the understeun wrong. Western Cape supports the report. That being the case, honorable members, the report is agreed to, we then move to the second uh, order. Consideration of report of Select Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Water and Sanitation and Human Settlements, inspection in local on notice of intervention issued in terms of section 139, 1B of the Constitution in Richmond Local Municipality. Thank you very much. We'll ask Honorable Dodobo to come forward and make a declaration. Yeah, thank you very much once more, uh, Honorable Chair, that I present the second report in terms of the oversight uh, visit that we conducted in KwaZulu Natal uh, last week. The Select Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, having regard to the notice of intervention invoked in the Richmond local municipality in, in KwaZulu Natal province, in terms of section 1391B of our constitution, embarked on an in local inspection visit to the Richmond local municipality in KwaZulu Natal on the 14th of August, 2019. The multi-party delegation consisting of the ANC, the DA, uh, the EFF and the IFP interacted with the MEC responsible for COCTA in the province, the different stakeholders who include the labor, the business, the farmers, the traditional authorities in the province, as well as the administrator appointed by the department to speed up implementation of the approved uh, recovery plan and turnaround for the overall improvement of the state of governance in the Richmond municipality. The department, as well as the representatives of the internal and external stakeholders within the jurisdiction of Richmond, tabled and presented their views and opinions on the invocation of the intervention in the municipality. The MEC of COCTA reflected on the current state of affairs in the municipality in terms of good governance, service delivery, 
infrastructure development, financial crisis, and all the related challenges which are impediments to the functionality of the municipality. In addition, the MEC presented the investigative work which was conducted by the department in terms of section 154 of the constitution in terms of giving support, monitoring the municipality and strengthening the capacity of the municipality. And to that extent, they identified that the municipality was dysfunctional. There were divisions within the political leadership of the municipality which, ho which had triggering effects to the staff as well as the community of Richmond. But equally, the MEC presented to us steps that the department undertook in terms of ensuring that they stabilize the situation. He also gave us the terms of reference of the administrator, which primarily focused on improving the performance of the municipality and turn it around. Our observation, observations as the select committee, we noted that the municipality was not adhering to the procedural and constitutional matters as stipulated by the department and the necessary legal prescripts. We also noted the fact that yes, the MEC and the Provincial Executive Council accordingly notified the Minister of COCTA within 14 days of the invocation of the intervention in the Richmond local municipality. The Minister of COCTA at national level approved the intervention within 28 days as prescribed by the Constitution. The chairperson of the NCOP was accordingly notified of the intervention on the 29th of March in 2019. In terms of the Back to Basics program, the municipality is categorized as financially dysfunctional. It is thus one of the municipalities in the country that are struggling to deliver on their role and mandate as it is financially stressed. The Cocta Min Meg resolved to prioritize this municipality and other municipality, municipalities that are regarded as financially distressed and dysfunctional and identified practical and sustainable support and intervention measures. The Select Committee has further noted that the MEC of Cocta in KwaZulu Natal met with the Municipal Council on the 20th of March 2019 to advise the Municipal Council of the decision of the provincial government to intervene in the municipality. Furthermore, the, this select committee has observed that the MEC for COCTA has appointed a ministerial representative who has prepared a recovery plan which was approved by the municipal council. This recovery plan focuses on the three critical areas, namely good governance and institutional development, financial recovery, as well as service delivery matters. On implementation matters, the select committee has noted that the Department of COCTA coordinates monthly steering committee meetings to monitor the implementation of the resolutions of the government and to coordinate support to the municipality. Members of the steering committee include representatives of the National Department of COCTA, Provincial Treasury, SALGA, as well as other sector departments. Despite the progress made in respect of the implementation of the intervention, the select committee has noted with concern the allegations of corruption, of fraud, of maladministration, and misuse of municipal vehicle, slow pace in the handling of disciplinary cases, misleading of counsel by senior officials, non-completion of infrastructure projects, as well as non-implementation of municipal council resolutions. Based on the above situation, we place the following recommendations 
for consideration by council that the NCOP approves the intervention in Richmond local municipality in terms of section 1391B of the constitution that the KwaZulu Natal MEC for COCTA should table the forensic investigation report in terms of section 106 of the Municipal Systems Act to the NCOP after tabling it to the Richmond Municipal Council. That with regard to consequence management, all cases of unauthorized expenditure incurred by the municipality should be investigated to determine if any person is liable for the expenditure as required by section 32, subsection 2B of the Municipal Finance Management Act. That the KwaZulu Natal MEC for COCTA, in collaboration with the National Minister of Cooperative Governance, should provide continuous support in terms of section 154 of the Constitution. That the administrator should review the best municipal financial recovery plan and ensure that there is alignment of the findings and concerns raised by the Auditor General. That the administrator should ensure the fast tracking of the process of the disciplinary hearing of the suspended municipal manager on allegations of fraud and corruption. That the administrator should focus on the implementation of the terms of reference and facilitate visits to performing municipalities in order to learn best practice and sharing knowledge. That the administrator should provide quarterly report to the select committee regarding progress made on the implementation of the intervention in the municipality. That the Richmond station commander should provide a list of all cases of fraud and corruption that are opened by the municipality, as well as their status and actions taken. That this select committee should, in cooperation with the relevant portfolio committee in KwaZulu Natal legislature, should in future conduct a follow up oversight visit to the municipality of Richmond to evaluate the progress made in respect of the intervention in the municipality. That the political issues, especially divisions and factions among councillors, is a major concern and it must be attended to. And lastly, that preference must be, and special attention must be made to support the Richmond local municipality to address specifically the triple challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality, especially in the light of the violence which, which was perpetuated in the area Please and the political down. killings thereof. On those basis, I submit the report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes the debate. I shall now put, put the question. The question is that the report be agreed to, but in accordance with Rule 71, I shall first allow provinces the opportunity to make the declarations of vote if they so wish. No province wishes to make a specific declaration. Thank you very much. Um, we shall now proceed to the manual voting on, on, on the question, and I shall do this in alphabetical order per province. I now call on the provinces to indicate their vote. Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape, I cast a report. Free State. Free State supports the report, Chair. Free State supports the report. Gauteng. Gauteng supports the report. Not KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal, I am Gela, I report. Mkele, KwaZulu Natal, Mpumalanga. Limpopo. Oh, sorry, Limpopo first. Limpopo support the report. Thank you very much. Mpumalanga. Mpumalanga supports the report, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Northern Cape. Thank you, Chairperson. The Northern Cape supports the report as stated by the Chairperson on the Thank you. Thank you very much. Northwest. Northwest support the report. Northwest supports the, rep the report. Western Cape. In China Colonia, I class I in my class. Yeah, class in China Colonia. 
Thank you, thank you very much. Everybody has voted, and all the provinces support the report. I therefore declare the report agreed to in terms of section 65 of the Constitution. Thank you very much. Uh, that honorable members concludes the debate and the business of the day. Members are requested to remain standing until the procession has left the house. The house stands adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>